Hello everybody, welcome, welcome again to one of our uh, recorder videos. No frills of course. This is a video to demonstrate uh, the durability and how easy it is to repair one of our recorders after it's been out for some time. This is a recorder that's been sent in from a customer. BER, we presume that means beyond the economic repair or we could say the best ever recorder. This recorder was made serial number J8168 and our production record for this instrument on this side shows us it was made in the 19th of 404 so it's just short of 10 years this has been in service you see the pen, the pen is way below zero the case is somewhat jaded <coughs> however for a uh, very modest sum we will put this back into full working order it seems the customer has this was originally a panel mount instrument they look like our feet so that means the customer has more than one of these recorders and then remove this from a panel and use it as a portable instrument so some corrosion The fact that the pen is below zero is a good indication that the actual pressure element itself has not been overranged. Not always the case. Uh, we look at the, uh, the linkages. And it seems to link on the initial we look for the this has been apart at some stage by the customer and um, there should be no end float in the, uh, in the pen arm so either uh, some of the spaces are missing uh, the linkages themselves are not properly in the, uh, in the pen arm and there is minor play backlash in the system so what that means is just like as you would repair a clock the, uh, the pivot point here and the pivot point there can be restaked using a special punch and reamed again to remove the, uh, the play. Uh, we'll rejoin the video once the case has been disassembled uh, and cleaned. Thank you. Welcome back to our uh, quick demonstration of a repair of a recorder. This is the recorder in the first half of the video with the uh, corrosion and uh, dirt removed. Simple process. It's had a replacement window. And the internals have been cleaned etc. I'm now going to show uh, this movement has been corrected. I'm now going to show how to correct the movement as far as where uh, that's been uh, over the 10 year period that this instrument has been out. I'll just remove that for a minute. Here's our standard movement plate. The single pen mechanism on it. Uh, the instrument in question had movement up and down due to uh, some missing spaces. All the component sizes on our, in our movement are 2mm. The, uh, the main pivot is 2mm. The, uh, the, uh, the pen arms are 2mm and the clevises are 2mm. Meaning that uh, all that's required is a 2mm brooch at the worst case. Now this is the sort of equipment that we use, uh, although it's not particularly necessary, you can see we've got a, a nice collection of uh, special punches, actually all you need for this part of the recorder, or all our recorder, is a 2mm punch. This is the shape of the punch, 
you see it has an internal taper and an external taper uh, and typically to show you how uh, the clevis should perform or not perform it should fall under its own weight it's a little little bit tight and there should be no movement no play between the tongue on the uh, span adjuster and the clevis nor should there be any play from the clevis which fits onto the the pen arm or should there be any play in the pivot which is the centre hole which is the most likely uh, position of wear it's unlikely that the actual uh, top of the pen arm will be worn because of the surface area that it exerts so, uh, in uh, relation to everything else so to put the uh, the pen arm back into uh, manufacturing con manufactured conditions I'll just uh, demonstrate fitting the clevis on the end hole here you can see actually probably difficult to show on the uh, on the film but there is actually probably somewhere between two and five thousandths of an inch movement in the uh, in the clevis and this is how you put it right use the punch Hammer. Notice the comparative size of the hammer. We don't need a sledgehammer. Too difficult to do these things while you're being filmed. But in reality, with one small tap, that should be all that's required. That's taken all of the uh, headache or play out of that, that particular pivot point. Obviously the pivot point that uh, you're going to uh, correct is the one that's been in as far as where the correct position for calibration. The same in the centre hole applies uh, and it's very unlikely because because the pivot doesn't move uh, the, the shaft doesn't move that, that anything would ever need to be done in the top plate of the actual pen mechanism. Uh, the same thing applies to the board and again after the, uh, as a repair the uh, the clevis normally will free itself once you've uh, staked it closed again it, by pushing the clevis in and just moving it slightly will give you enough for it to move freely failing that you need to put a two millimeter uh, with care you can put a two millimeter drill or ideally a two millimeter brooch thank you very much for watching Okay, here we go, part three. Starting to get boring on our uh, recording uh, videos. The last part of the uh, repair is obviously to recalibrate an operations check. So, we've already got 2,500 psi on, we're at 2,500 psi. 5,000, 5,000 10,000, 10,000 so as quick as possible 15,000, 15,000 20,000, 20,000. Going back down. 15, a little bit of stitching on the actual pen nib itself then. 15, 15.
10, 10. Five, five, and down to zero. A ten year old instrument and a very modest repair cost, about a hundred pounds. Uh, I don't think you'll find any of the competition anywhere near. Thank you very much.